Okay, <clears throat> so this is the water depth hackathon here that we're doing. Um, and we've got a bunch of different options for measuring depth. Uh, one of the most exciting options here uh, relates to this piece of wire. Um, so there is a, a way of measuring depth by uh, measuring the capacitance of two parallel wires um, because when some of the wire is in water, that will change the overall capacitance of this parallel plate capacitor, um, par parallel wire capacitor. Uh, the material that, that surrounds the wires changes, I guess, the, the dielectric in that region. Mm -hmm. Therefore, um, if we measure the capacitance at the top, um, as we fill a chamber with water, uh, we'll get a different capacitance. Um, it, so some portion is, is air and some portion is water. And so this has to be we um, this has to be up and down like that to measure capacitance, right? Yeah, the you need to place it in such a way that the amount of wire that is uh, in water is related to the thing you want to measure, the depth of the okay. water. Okay. Yeah. Um, I mean, so it could be, like, if this is the water level, um, this could be scrunched up below that water level. Uh, but then, no, that doesn't work very well. You want to have, like, a linear relationship. Okay. Yeah. So um, with that kind of hazy idea there, the thing is there, there is a device, uh, a 90 or so dollar device, that does that, that, that measures the capacitance and gives you a, a result. Um, using some electronics. But we believe that the electronics that we've already been playing with can actually uh, do the same thing. And for certain types of measurements, I think we can do it very cheaply. It turns out that the circuit that we were using for the Koki device, this mm -hmm. other water quality device, which is the same circuit that we were using to measure conductivity on the riffle, uh, it looks like that's how maybe they were measuring the capacitance of this device. Mm -hmm. So I think we might actually be able to first breadboard it with a coquille and then use a riffle to measure and, re and record that over time. So the, the way that the coquille works and the way that our circuit for measuring conductivity <laughs> operates is um, we basically have this chip, the 555, chip, which is a very common chip in um, the electronics world and very cheap um, mm -hmm. because it's so common and it's been produced for a long time. This is a chip where uh, the, the purpose of this chip is to produce a square wave. So uh, it's producing a, 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 a signal that goes from some, volt, say zero volts to three volts, and that signal over time is going on, off, on, off, on, off. And the way that you determine the frequency or the, the amount of time between on and off, so like the, the length of these, uh, is by hooking up a capacitor and a resistor, not in necessarily in this configuration, but just imagine mm -hmm. that it's connected to um, some resistor and some capacitor somehow. So capacitor, resistor, and then there's an output signal that is generating this frequency. The trick with the coquille is that rather than the, I mean, I, the relationship is the frequency uh, is something like 0.7 over resistance times capacitance. So what that means is that um, as the, as the uh, resistance goes up, the frequency goes down or as the capacitance goes up, the frequency goes down, because they're inversely related. Mm -hmm. So the way that we were measuring uh, conductivity was instead of having the resistor there, we are placing probes in water resistivity of the water that is changing the frequency. Okay. Um, as the resistance gets uh, 
lower, the frequency goes up. Hmm. Am, I go am I going on too long? No, I think it's all right. Let's finish. No, I think you're okay. Keep going. Okay. So okay, so that's how the con that's how our conductivity uh, works, and the and the um, the conductivity uh, hmm. is proportional to one over the resistance. Um, so it and the resistance goes as one over the frequency. The resistance goes as one this one over the frequency. So what you can see there is that um, at the end of the day, the frequency is uh, directly, uh, sorry, the conductivity is directly proportional to the frequency that comes out of this thing. Okay. So the higher the frequency, the greater the conductivity. In our case, so that was conductivity, but if we want to measure water depth, then what we can do is instead of replacing the resistor, we keep the resistor and what we described before with that device is that we have this capacitor that changes capacitance with water depth. And so instead of hooking up a single, you know, a fixed capacitor mm -hmm. in the system, we're going to change it up for the Koki and hook it up to the wire. And that makes so much more sense now, Don. Good. Now I, I understand now what we're doing now. Okay. <laughs> So, the, so it's kind of fun because the same, and the, the whole thing that was kind of exciting about the Koki was that this signal, this oscillating signal, uh, we can hook up um, uh, an Arduino or our version of something that's Arduino based, the Riffle, and, and we can, um, Riffle say, we can record that over time to an SD card. But when we were playing around with this and trying to understand how the signal operated, rather than go through the, you know, um, record it to an SD card, load it onto a computer, see what was going on, go back and fix things. Instead of doing that, because this was an oscillating um, signal, we could actually hook that up to a speaker and we could just get, uh, you know, a, a frequency out of that, um, an audio frequency. And so in the case of conductivity, we were able to get a signal where the higher the conductivity, the, the uh, higher the frequency. Mm -hmm. um, so more stuff dissolved in the water, the, the, the higher the pitch. So that was neat. And there are a lot of cool things that we can do with that. In this case, um, what is happening? Do we say the, the, con the capacitance goes up the more water is in the system. Right. So that means that, in fact, the, the, uh, the because the frequency goes as the inverse of the capacitance, the higher the water level, the greater the capacitance, and so the lower the frequency. Okay. So as we're pouring water into this, it should go. Okay. Which is maybe the opposite of what we would do to it. I don't know, but when you think of like if like think of something like dropping and like oh it's getting further away it's getting more quiet. Mm -hmm. I don't know if it's as um, but we could we could you know probably program something. It's different. I don't think it's uh, that counterintuitive for depth. It's not too bad. No, it's not too bad. But 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 we can put up a speaker and we can hook up a riffle right to record our data. That's right. And so tonight, um, what we so we were just trying to figure this out. The trick is that because the frequency depends on both the resistance and the capacitance. Mm -hmm. In the case of conductivity, um, when we were we we were keeping C fixed and measuring R, we chose a capacitor such that the typical range of resistances in the water would lead to a frequency that was in the audio range, the audible range. Oh, so we might get outside of the audible range for this. When I did a quick calculation, I might have been wrong, but I think that the capacitance that Dan Beavers was measuring before was in the, I think, like 0.04 nanofarads, which I believe operates us at a frequency so then we just have to choose a, a resistor, but we only we don't have many resistors here. This is oh. our do, you, do you need me to go get our beagle from the house and see if she can? We could use a dog sensor. 
Oh, <laughs> yes, if we had to. If we had right. the beagle, she could let us know I when. Know, you know, we, we might be even too high for dogs to hear. I don't even know. But that's okay. That would be great. Like, certainly, she would hear first. Um, so what we so what we just started to play with was, um, you know, the the riffle will have no problem measuring that higher frequency. So we might we might start with the riffle instead. Okay. And the other thing, I think uh, actually that the resistance that we're looking for in this case is something that we could actually get out of out of water. <laughs> so we might be do, we might create two like, sensors in. We might do something dumb, and in this circuit, uh, we could actually use the water as the resistor because I think it's in the right range. I'm not but sure. so some on some of those higher tech devices, we have multiple sensors on the same probe that we're putting into the water. Yeah. So would it that that could maybe make sense? Like, I, I maybe that's how other people are measuring this, is because they're using the resistor and the capacitance is both in that same probe that's going into the water. Right. Um, or me not, but it's just a right. simple way we could think about this. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, um, no, that so right for each type of measurement, um, there might be an optimal uh, circuit that people have mm -hmm. created, and in fact, there are folks. Well, Ben Gamari, um, who's working on another version of the riffle, um, is measuring uh, the conductivity with a simpler circuit that doesn't that does away with the 555 five, five. Hmm. Um, and is, is probably more robust and it's certainly lower power um, but uh, but yeah uh, in our case here there's a lot that it seems we we can do with just the simple 555 five, five. and uh, and it looks like we might now be the fun thing is that with this one simple circuit uh, with no microcontroller and just this basic 555 and that, that's an idea that, that Jeff Warren uh, pointed to um, <coughs> described in a, in a couple of research notes and then Matt Lippincott has also been contributing some great ideas and Jeff Walker we have to keep a history of all the people that have been contributing to this so I'm, I'm just channeling what a lot of people have been saying but the, the, the cool thing is that on this one little breadboard that has a resistor a, well Variably, a, re a resistor or a capacitor, a 555 five chip, and um, power, and then an output of uh, an audio speaker. Uh, we might be able to do conductivity, depth, light, because the resistor could be a photocell. Um, uh, what else were we doing? Temperature. Temperature, exactly. That whole thing we were working on earlier? Just, just, <laughs> yeah, just a couple minutes ago. Um, Light would be useful in measuring the color of colorimetric strips, for example. Or turbidity. Turbid turbidity. That's one of the water quality parameters we're interested in. And and then um, with a simple variation of this circuit, I think we could we could basically um, was it like a resistor divider that we could measure voltage with? Um, and if we can measure voltage, then we can basically get the output of many of these fancy sensors that are that are measuring you know, uh, all sorts of things, because um, there are a lot of, there are a lot of uh, uh, chips out there that will measure um, uh, something and output a signal, a voltage from zero to some voltage that is proportional okay. to that. So like pH, for example. Mm -hmm. uh, so anyway, that's, that's the plan. All right. So we're going to, I think we're just going to try to do water depth right now. Um, and, uh, I should probably stop talking about it. Yeah, because you're going to kill my cell phone battery. Yeah, because I only have an hour left. Okay, okay. Yeah. All right.